Okay, we'll start with number five. Um, I just want to point out uh, we're using a new idea. Um, for instance, this is a, a difference of squares, and we, we could solve it with factoring. Um, and I'll do that, and then I'll remind you, you know, why what we're doing in this section is new and different. So this could be factored as 3x plus 9 times 3x minus 9, because that's how we would factor this difference of squares. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 81 is 9. Uh, we can factor it as uh, the product of two what we call um, conjugates, where the middle sign is different. Um, that would multiply out to 9x squared minus 81. Um, we could set each of these factors equal to 0. And then, so 3x would equal negative 9, and x would equal negative 3 when we divide by 3 on both sides. Same here, except for an opposite sign. And x would be 3. So we can solve it that way. Okay. Or the new thing to do is to notice there's no x term. Um, so if all we have is an x squared, why don't we use the square root to cancel that out? And before we can do that, we need to get every, the, the x squared by itself. So um, if we start with 9x squared minus 81 equals 0, we can add 81 to both sides. And we get 9x squared equals 81. We can divide by 9. And we take the square root. You'll notice here we get plus or minus 3. If you just say the square root of 9 is 3, that's true. The square root of 9 is 3, except for we're trying to solve this equation. Any number that can be plugged in for x, we're trying to, let me go back a step, we're trying to solve this equation. Um, any number that can be plugged in for x uh, and make the equation true needs to be reported as a solution. Uh, 3 times itself is 9, but also negative 3 times itself is uh, positive 9. So we include both answers, a positive and a negative 3, those are our solutions. So when we take the square root of both sides, we always include plus or minus. Okay? We don't just tack plus or minus on the end, uh, you know, the last part of our answer. It's when we take the square root that we say plus or minus because if we square something that's positive, we get positive. If we square something that's negative, we also get positive. So we want to include that in both. So here we'll divide by 25 on both sides. 0 divided by 25 is 0. Take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of 0 is 0. The only number that can multiply by itself and give 0 is 0. All right, here we will add 45 to both sides. So we get 4n squared equals negative 11. Um, and then we'll divide by 4. Negative 11 fourths. OK, then we go to take the square root. Um, let's forget about negative 11 fourths for a second. Let's take an easy, even easier number. What if n squared was equal to negative uh, 16? Okay, at least that number has a square root. 16 does. Well, what would n be? We might think 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. The only problem with that is um, a positive 4 squared is a positive 16. We need to get a negative 16. Right? We're trying to solve this equation. Well, negative 16. Um, so you might think, OK, let's change it to negative 4. But still, if we put negative 4 in here, that means we're going to take negative 4 squared. That means negative 4 times itself. Now it's 4 times 4 is 16. Negative times negative is positive. Again, we get a positive 16. There is no real number that multiplies by itself to give you a negative 16. So positive is out, negative is out. That doesn't work. There's no solution. Why was there no solution? Well, the 16 was, was fine. It, was, uh, it has a, a square root. Uh, but the negative, it's the negative that causes the issue. Um, and that's why this has no solutions. Okay. It's not because it's 11 fourths. There is a number that will multiply by itself to give you 11 fourths. Um, let's look at what if it was like n squared equals uh, 17. Right? And we see the square root of both sides. Well. We can put plus or minus the square root of 17. There is a number that multiplies by itself to give us 17. Um, 
it's a little bit bigger than 4. 4 times 4 is 16, but 5 times 5 is 25, so that's too big. 17 is somewhere between 16 and 25, so its square root is somewhere between 4 and 5. And there is a number. It, it does multiply by itself. Let's try uh, 4.2 times 4.2. A little too big, 4.15 squared. A little too big, 4.1. Let's see what that does. That's better, 4.11 squared. We can keep uh, fine-tuning this and getting closer and closer to 17. Uh, so we can take the square root of 17, and it's 4.123, and so on. So it's not that it's a weird number, that it's a fraction. All, all numbers have uh, some kind of a square root, uh, except for negative numbers. You can't take the square root of a negative number, OK? So it's because there's no square root of negatives. I'll put a little star right there, a little, little footnote that says for now. One of the things I didn't like in, uh, in any of my classes, math, science, whatever, uh, was when I was told something like it was a fact and then later it was revealed that wasn't so much a fact. Uh, as what was convenient for the time. So right now it's convenient to consider these to not have solutions. But later we're going to get into imaginary numbers, complex numbers, and uh, those numbers do work as square roots of negatives. But for now we can just say no solutions. Okay. If we wanted to be real um, specific we could say there are no real solutions. Um, so anyway, when we have a a situation where we take the square root of both sides and we wind up taking the square root of a negative number, no real solutions. If in some other situation we take the square root of just a funky number, that doesn't mean there's no solutions, it just means that, uh, well, the answer is a weird number, like 4.123. Alright, next, let's add 5 to both sides. Remember the, the thing that we want to do first is take whatever is squared, x or t or m or a, or whatever, and uh, get it alone. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. We've got 17 there. And divide by 3 on both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Uh, and a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17 thirds, whatever that is. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to take the square root of 17 thirds. It's about 2.38. Okay, so I could say this was about plus or minus 2.38. I prefer the square root of 17 thirds because it's exactly the right answer. That That's the way that I can tell you the number I'm looking for, the number that multiplies by itself to give you 17 thirds. 2.38 is close, but it's I'm rounding, right? If I take 2.38 and I square it, um, that's, well, 17 thirds is, is a fraction. So let's see how close 17 thirds is to 5.6644. It's actually 5.6 repeating forever, and that's not what this is. So I mean, if I write 2.3, it's close to the, the square root, but it's, it's always going to be an approximation. But this is going to be exactly right. Enough of that, I guess. Uh, OK, so next, we are going to add 4 to both sides. So we got 3b squared equals uh, 9, divide by 3, take the square root of both sides, b equals plus or minus the square root of 3, or approximately 1.732. Remember that plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. Okay, especially in a situation like this. Let me show you why. So, We'll, we've got not just an x squared, but an x minus 7 squared. But whatever this is, when we square it, it needs to give us 6. So this should be the square root of 6. OK, let me uh, maybe invent another problem with a little bit better numbers. Maybe x minus squared equals 25. OK, so there's this thing right here, right? It's a. Uh, an expression, this this big 
lump of, of stuff, right? The result of x minus 7. And we're going to take x and we're going to subtract 7 and then we're going to square it. Now whatever x is, when we subtract 7, we had better come up with 5, don't you think? Because we're going to take 5 and square it and we need to come up with 25. Um, so well, that would be the same as, by saying that that should be 5, it's the same as saying what's the square root of both sides. Right? So x minus 7 needs to come out to be 5 but it could also come out to be negative 5. Because if this lump comes out to be negative 5, we'll square negative 5 and we'll still get 25. Okay, so we can take the square roots of uh, a parentheses that are squared. That's the moral of that story. So we take the square root of both sides. We get x minus 7 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. Okay, if it really just... Uh, bothers you to, to write the square root of 6 and you want to write a decimal, just write lots of decimal places. So 2.4495, let's say. Plus or minus. You can work with it either way. I'm going to work with the square root of 6 because that's exact. And uh, if I really want a decimal, I'll get it at the very end and it'll be as accurate as possible. Um, so what do we do now? We got x minus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. That really means x minus 7 is equal to the positive square root of 6, or x minus 7 is equal to the negative square root of 6. Just like this one over here. x minus 7 would be equal to 5, or x minus 7 could be equal to negative 5. Right? We just kind of set up two equations and figure out what would x have to be so that we get 5, and what would x have to be so that we get negative 5. Or in the other case, what would x have to be so we wind up with the square root of 6, and what would x have to be so we wind up with negative square root of 6? Well, obviously, to get by x by itself, I'm going to add 7. We cannot add 6 and 7. Um, that isn't really the number 6, is it? It's 2.4495. So we can't be adding 7 to 6. Um, you can't add numbers to things inside square roots. You can't add numbers to things inside parentheses. Like I can't add numbers to, to either of these guys. I have to respect the order of operations. So 7 plus the square root of 6. And over here, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. But now that's a negative square root of 6. So that's 7 minus the square root of 6. So these are my two solutions. This would be 7 plus 2.4495, and this would be 7 minus 2.4495. All right. Again, we want to get the squared thing, whatever is being squared, by itself. So first we'll divide by 6. Okay. And as with the previous problem, we want to cancel out the square. So we will take the square root. The square root and the square cancel each other out take the square root of the other side, we get x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Okay, and then we'll subtract 4 on both sides, except for maybe we want to split this up into a couple of equations so that doesn't look confusing. So x plus 4 equals the square root of 3, and x plus 4 equals the negative square root of 3. So we'll subtract 4 on both sides, we get x equals negative 4 plus the square root of 3, do the same thing here. x equals negative 4 minus the square root of 3. Remember, we can't take 3 and subtract 4 um, because that's not really 3. That's the square root of 3. Uh, this is not a square root. This is a square root. You can't subtract a square root and a non-square root. You also can't subtract a square root and a square root. Um, so don't do that. Don't subtract 4 from 3 when 3 is inside the square root. Okay. Um, again, we want to get the square root or the squared thing by itself so that we can take the square root. So we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. We get 5 equals z plus 11 squared. We would like to cancel out that square, so we take the square root. I'm going to switch the sides here. Get z plus 11 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay, we're going to subtract 11 z equals negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 5. We can write it that way. Um, that's what we 
tend to do when we have square roots like this, and they're not nice numbers. We can also write z equals negative 11 plus the square root of 5, or z equals negative 11 minus the square root of 5. Last one. We want to get the squared thing by itself so that we can take the square root. Okay. I want to get rid of this fraction. All right. So it's no different than if we were to be isolating, say, like 3 fifths uh, x equals 18. How do you get rid of that fraction? Well, we'd multiply by the reciprocal. So let's do that. All right. Cancels out this fraction. 18 over 1 times 5 over 3. 3 and 18. Uh, that's 6. So on this side, we have k minus 8 squared equals 6 times 5, that's 30. Then we take the square root of both sides. k minus 8 equals plus or minus the square root of 30. Um, we add 8 to both sides. k is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 30. What does that mean? Let's just remind ourselves. Let's see what the square root of 30 is. Square root of 30. Okay, it's 5.477. It could be positive or negative, so we'll take the positive. We'll add 8. What do we get? 13.477. Uh, okay. What if we take 8 and we subtract the square root of 30? We get 2.523. 2.523. So both of these are solutions. Um, of course, these are approximations. These are approximately. If I were to plug this in to this equation, I would get something just really close uh, to 18, like I'm supposed to. So like if we take 3 fifths times 13.477 minus 8 squared, will I get 18? Well, I should, but I'll just get something really close. Um, so let's take our calculator. We'll subtract 8 from that. Then we'll square it. And then we'll multiply it by 3 fifths. And we should get something close to 18. 17.9985. That's close, really close to 18. Uh, but we use this decimal approximation. The exact right answer would be uh, what one was that? It was 8 plus the square root of 30. If I were to redo that and do 8 plus the square root of 30, that's what I just plugged in for uh, k. All right, then I'll take that and I'll subtract 8. Well, you'll notice the 8 and the 8 are going to cancel each other out. That's going to leave the square root of 30. Let's square that. I get that, I get 30. The reason it does that is because the calculator kind of knows that this is the square root of 30 because. Um, it, it's not just cutting it off right there. It's just showing you that it's cut off. But it, it knows that this number squared should give you 30. So we square it. We get 30. We multiply it by 3 fifths. And we get 18. All right. So just remember, get the square thing alone. Whether it be an x squared, a y squared, an a squared, and a k minus 8 squared, a 2k plus 5 uh, plus 6k squared, squared. Like we want to get this thing that's squared by itself. We won't see anything like that, but I was, I was trying to be outlandish uh, and put something really weird. So whatever it is that's squared, get it by itself. Take the square root of both sides, the square root of both sides. Try to shorten this up. Uh, remember, remember that plus or minus when you take the square root. Okay? And then if this needs to be done, get the variable by itself. Sometimes you'll take the square root, and the only thing that was squared was the variable. Like you have x squared equals 16, and you take the square root of both sides, you get plus or minus 4. Um, but otherwise, 
uh, you may need to get a variable by itself like this. You may need to add eight to both sides, get k by itself. Right? That's basically it. The new idea is take the square root of both sides to get the variable by itself. Maybe don't factor like we have been doing. Okay, that doesn't mean we can forget factoring and that it's obsolete. We're gonna actually use factoring in the next section. Um, so don't forget about it. Don't push it to the side. But uh, using the square root is a cool idea. And the thing that allows us to do is solve things that were previously unsolvable. Like we could not have uh, factored this out and found answers like 13.477 and 2.523. Right? All the solutions we found were like 9 and a, a, it's strange, just maybe 3 fifths or something like that. Um, but now even with ones that are unfactorable, we can find solutions. And only if we try to take the square root of negatives will we get no solutions. Right? So it just expands the body of uh, quadratics that we can solve. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.